Hi everybody, this is Tim. Welcome back to the Tetrix RoboBench video series. Today we want to talk to you about motor encoders. Uh, a lot of times in various applications, uh, people want to be able to track uh, how their DC motors actually, how far they rotate. And so that's kind of what an encoder does. And the, the encoders that we send with the Tetrix sets are what we call, they're a high resolution optical quadrature encoder. And what that really means is that uh, in every 360 degrees, we d divide uh, each degree up into four. So uh, it basically is a high resolution encoder. Kind of like if you measure time in minutes versus seconds, uh, the more um, increments you divide it up into, the more accurate can, you can be. So that's kind of what basically you need to think about this as, is a very highly accurate optical encoder. And uh, here's basically one that's already mounted up, and we're going to go ahead and mount that in a minute. But let's talk, before we do that, about how you might use this. Um, obviously, we could put this on the drive system of our robot. And when we do that, we would then be able to, uh, to determine and track distance, how far my robot goes with each rotation of the wheel or partial rotation of the wheel. So that's going to allow us to do navigation if we want to based on distance this wheel actually rotates. Now, another application would be if we wanted to uh, control the, the rotation of an arm. We could actually mount um, this DC motor so that it, it actually we could control how far um, that arm would rotate and kind of take the place of a servo. Uh, if we needed more power uh, in this particular application, we wanted to lift more, we could put a DC motor with an encoder and get a very similar result to how you would use a servo. So those are a couple of the applications that we might be able to use, those as well as others, but encoders can really make, uh, take your use of your DC motors to another level. So let's go ahead and let's actually look at what's involved to mount those. I'm going to set this aside just for a moment, set it down. We've got our example of our motor that's already uh, mounted up, but obviously we have to start with the motor and we need to uh, have uh, an encoder pack. Now I want to point out a couple things as I get this out. One of the first things that you want to uh, remember, and I've got one already pulled out here, is there's a very good instruction sheet that comes with that. So um, it's a good idea to look that over as you, uh, before you get ready to do that. There is a cable that comes with uh, the encoder. This is a kind of a fine wire cable, so you want to kind of be careful with that, but you want to make sure that you, you keep that. And then inside the static free uh, bag is the actual encoder uh, materials themselves. They will include a base, just like that, that has to mount to the motor. They will include a cap, two mounting screws, put those out there, the actual optical disc itself, and I want to kind of caution everybody there, you want to make sure that you have very clean hands or you use gloves. The oil from your skin or any dirt, uh, if you get that on the, um, the optical disc or reflective disc can uh, actually uh, deter the performance and, and uh, kind of uh, make your encoder not as effective if it works at all as you really need it to be. So once you've done that, you want to go ahead to start this process. We're going to start by mounting the base. There are two holes in the top of the motor that will accept these screws. You mount the base just by actually putting it over the shaft. It, the encoder has to go around the rotating shaft of the motor uh, otherwise, it can't read the, the, uh, the rotations. You will need a Phillips head uh, screwdriver, but it's a simple process of starting that. You can use your 4-in-1 screwdriver. Just snug that down. Again, you kind of want to use some common sense. You don't want to tighten one side down all the way without putting the other screw in. Kind of uh, balance that out when you... Make sure you don't put too much torque, but it should fit right on there. Once you get both sides, snug them down good. It doesn't have to be real tight. This next part is important. Again, there is, if you look at this encoder, I'm going to very carefully try and hold it by the, the sides. If you can see that, there's two distinct sides. 
And again, you want to reference your diagram here to show you exactly, but basically the, the tall side is going to go onto the shaft first, just like that. And then included in this pack is a special spacing tool. And if you just basically get that started, then you can put that cap on top, simply slowly press that down. And the, that spacing tool will bottom out against the two tabs that are on the side of the mounting deck. When you have that in place, you know your encoder is positioned properly. So now that I've got the encoder pushed down in place, I'm gonna take my cap and again, make sure I notice that there is an opening for um, the cable connector and I'm gonna carefully put that over my shaft of my uh, motor, making sure that um, my tabs are lined up. Quick note of warning that once you kind of get this in place, it's, it is a little bit tricky to get back off, so you kind of want to make sure it's where it needs to be. And then just should snap down in place just like that. Make sure the tabs are engaged on both sides and your encoder is mounted. And then the last thing you do, once you put it in place on your robot, wherever you uh, mount that in place, then you can make sure that you mount the cable uh, onto the end of the uh, cable enclosure there and you're ready to go ahead and go, uh, proceed from there. The last thing that we wanna make sure that we talk about is that depending on the software program that you use, the actual programming uh, necessary and the input that you get from your encoder can vary a little bit. So um, as long as you're aware of that and you should be comfortable depending on the programming environment, you're good to go. So I hope you found that beneficial information. Maybe you can uh, think of a use for that on your next robot build. So again, thanks for joining us. Have fun out there and build some good robots.